The question that I have is, could you do an example on calculating the vertical stress change due to an embankment loading? Now let's consider the case of an embankment loading. This chart corresponds to a loading that looks like this. And the loading consists of a linear part and a constant part. And the chart gives you the influence value based on the geometrical parameters that you see in the picture here which are little a, little b, and the depth z. You might ask, uh, what if you have an earth dam which will have this part right there, right? Or what about uh, if I take a point over here someplace? How do we calculate that? Well, these questions are better answered through an example. So let's do an example on this. So here we have an embankment that is basically like a homogeneous uh, earth dam. The density of the material is 17 kilonewton per meter cubed, and the height of the uh, embankment is 22.5 meters. The embankment is symmetric about the center line. The slope over here is 1 vertical to 2.25 horizontal, and this downstream side also has the same slope. We are interested in calculating the vertical stress change at points A, B and C. A is right on the center line, B is right below this corner right there, C is right below the toe here. Obviously this embankment does not look like this one right here for which the chart applies. So this is what you do. You cut the embankment right along the center line, separate that into two parts, find the contribution of the vertical stress change due to each part, and then sum it up to find the total vertical stress change at point A. So we are invoking the principle of superposition here. So here's my picture after separating the embankment into two halves. In the vertical direction, instead of marking the distance or the height of the embankment, I'm just going to mark the pressure, which is the maximum soil pressure that acts over here, right? which can be calculated using this formula, gamma times h, and that works out to be 382.6 kilopascal. Now if you compare this with this, it looks exactly the same in terms of shapes and patterns, right? And this one is basically the same, except it's flipped about the vertical line. Because of symmetry, this half is identical to this half, and therefore we only have to calculate one of these. So let's consider the left half. A is 50.6, B is 5 meters. So A over Z is 50.6 over 12, that works out to be 4.22. B over Z is 5 over 12, which is 0.42. So with these ratios, I go to the chart and I locate the vertical line corresponding to 4.22, which is around here someplace. And then I go up to the curve that has point 4, 2. Obviously, there's no curve correspond exactly um, with that value. So we're going to have to interpolate that. So I'm over here someplace. That gives me 0.47. So I, the influence value is 0.47. Then I use my influence value on this equation right here. 0.47 multiplied by Q naught. And then I multiply that by 2 in order to get the total vertical stress change at point A. And it works out to be 359.6 kilopascal. Now let's consider point B. The approach is basically the same. You cut the embankment along this vertical line and separate into two halves, or two parts basically. Calculate the stress change due to each one of these, sum it up in order to calculate the total vertical stress change. For the left part, A is 50.6 according to the definition over here, but the basically there is no uniform part, uniformly loaded part, and therefore B is zero. All right, so you calculate the ratios, go back to the chart and find your influence value, and I got roughly 0.425, and then on the right side looks exactly like one of these, 
So you have an A, you have a B, calculate the ratios and calculate your influence value. So you substitute everything in this equation in order to calculate the total vertical stress change and it works out to be 348 kilopascal. Now let's consider point C. So here what we do is we consider this part and then subtract this part out. Okay, so that's what I have uh, drawn here. So first we're going to consider this part right here and this length is now going to be 10 plus 50.6 which is 60.6 and then we're going to subtract out the contribution coming from this little triangular part where this distance is 50.6, basically this distance right there, right? Of course, this part doesn't look like this, right? It's sort of like take this and invert it, you get this, okay? But the bottom line is whether you have it like this or you have it like this, the change in the vertical stress at a point below this vertical line it's going to be the same. So here are my calculations and uh, it should be easy to follow so I'll let you guys follow this.